to go. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Today we're working on a Toro weed eater. Now, the gentleman who sold it to me says it needs a new primer bulb. And I looked at it, and the fuel lines were completely shot. And the primer bulb was, of course, cracked and leaking. But we all know when you're doing that, the carburetor is probably in bad shape, too. So I put a little bit of starter fluid in it, and she tried to kick. So I said, okay, I went ahead and bought it. So today we're going to go ahead and put a carburetor and primer bulb on this one. Now, if you're doing this at home, don't bother rebuilding a carburetor. If you've got all the equipment, you know, an ultrasonic cleaner, and you've got all the diaphragms and everything available, it's the economical way to go. But if you don't have the right equipment, it'll save you a lot of headaches to spend the 15 bucks on Amazon and buy yourself a carburetor. So even though on the last one we did a chainsaw, we rebuilt the carburetor, on this one we're going to go ahead and just replace it. So all you new people out there, don't forget to subscribe. It's free, and we appreciate it. And let's get started. You can buy this little kit on Amazon. It comes with all the parts that you're going to need. And it comes with a piece of fuel line and carburetor, air filter, the primer, gaskets, the whole new York, whole shooting match. You can buy that for about $15. And considering these things cost a couple of hundred dollars for a semi-decent straight shaft nowadays, definitely worth the investment. Rebuilding them is nice. If you buy the gaskets by the dozen, if you're buying them one at that doesn't look good. If you're buying them one at a time, it's definitely not worth it. Let's see that. So let's pull this bad boy off. Okay, get you to let go. There you go. Now this little top. Oh, I was going to say when you turn it sideways, it comes off pretty easy, but I suppose you see that. Sometimes you'll need to, depending on the carburetor, you'll need to twist this a little bit to get it to work, but that one came off easy peasy. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull the primer bulb off. And let's put the new one on. And this really is just this easy. You've got one or two little tricks that you're going to see when we're putting it back together, but it'll go just as easy as that. Okay, on your new primer bulb, you've got a short stem and a long stem. The short stem will go to the carburetor. The long stem goes back to the fuel tank. And what this does is it returns the gas to the tank. That's the wrong one. Let's find the right one for this one. There we go. Now we've got the right one. So let's go ahead and get her in place. And it just clicks in. I said it just clicks in. And I'm sure you heard it just click. So now we're going to take the longer stem from the primer and put it to the return line. And we're going to take the shorter one and put a new hose on it. And we're going to use this hose, I think. Yep, that hose looks nice and tight. And we're just going to leave that there off to the side for right now. And now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and put the carburetor on. Our old gasket, yeah, our old gasket looks pretty good, so we can go ahead and reuse her. And these Toros in particular have a little catch to them. The way, the way this faceplate goes on, it's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. So let's get our bolts ready. And we'll show you how we want to do this. Let's First thing we'll do is we'll get our, get our bolts started on our carburetor. There we go. And there we go. Now we'll run our primer line over to our carburetor. And we'll cut it to length here. You don't want it to be too short because it'll fall off. You don't want it to be too long. 
because if it's too long, it'll kink over time, you know, as it heats up. So it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You want it to be just right. And this one's a little bit tight, but that's a good thing. That'll keep it on for a long time. That's a whole lot tight. So as you can see, we've got a nice little loop right there. So now we're going to add our gasket to the equation right here. And sometimes with these, this little back plate here has nuts on it and the nuts will float free. So you'll have to hold this thing upside down to get, it, to get the bolts to thread on. What I usually do is I start like this and I keep this thing going as I push it in. And it'll catch a nut occasionally. There, it caught a nut. This one might and might not. Let's find out. And that one didn't catch a nut at all. So what we're going to do, let me back you out here a little bit. There you go. What we're going to do on this one is we're going to hold the whole thing like this and turn it upside down. Well, upside down is an opinion. And you can see it grabbed. And that wasn't grabbing before. Because imagine that the nut's in a little sleeve and the bolt's coming in and it pushes the nut up the sleeve. So holding it upside down gives it a little traction. See how we sit for tightness? Okay, we're all good. Our choke is covering well. So let's get this stuff out of the way. Now the only thing we've got left is to add our fuel line down here. And that's just a matter of plugging the line in. Now I added these fuel lines ahead of time just to make this fast. And if you look here, we got a little bit of a kink in our fuel line. And you definitely don't want that. So we're going to go in here and pull our fuel line in just a little bit. There you go. Looking good, looking good. And we are ready to go. So let's put some gas in it and see what we've got. I'll bring you back into the frame. And if you're working on yours at home and you think that it's that hard to put the carburetor on, it's really not. It's honest to goodness this easy just about every time. There you go. We'll put about half a tank in her. That should keep it busy for a few minutes. Now, when I got this, it didn't have an air filter. But lucky enough, the little kit I bought had an air filter. And you make it a point because if, you, if you're shopping for carburetors online for yours, you'll find 100 different kits that have 100 different combinations of parts. So make sure you find one that's got the fuel lines and it's got the air filter and all the stuff you might need. Because I'd almost bet you a nickel this will start. I'd bet you a nickel this will start third or fourth pull. And by the time we're done, we'll tune her up as needed. Sometimes they need tuned, sometimes they don't. But we'll find out. So let's take her over here and give her a run. Oh, first, let's prime her up. Now, if your little primer bulb doesn't fill up, don't worry about it. See, this one's keeping a bubble going. Nothing wrong with that. You don't expect it to be full. Okay, let's put her on choke. Let's turn her on. Let's give her a run. Oh, works like a charm. Now that's funny. She started right up and she worked perfect. And those of you who are observant might have noticed it. But sometimes I get busy filming and forget little details. No accelerator. So let me get you over the top so you can see what we're doing here. There you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our thumb to accelerate it a little bit. 
get the nut lined up correctly and lay it, lay this in. And I promise this is a whole lot easier to do when there's no camera. There we go. And you can see she clicks right in. So now we know she starts. She starts really easy. Not for the big question, will she accelerate? Since we just started a second ago, that means the carburetor and everything's all full of gas, so we should not have to use the choke again. So let's see what we got. Hit the starter. So we're going to take her and do a little bit of an adjustment on it to see if we can get as much of that out as we can. Let's open up the garage door so we don't suffocate ourselves. Oh, turn the power on. Okay, we're adjusting. Okay, we're going to adjust this little screw right here. This will set our rich lean to get her sounding a little bit better. So there's a little bit to be had here. Now we went the wrong direction. Pretty close. This is not as easy as it looks. Trying to do this with the with the engine running. It shakes all over the place. Okay, that was fun. Now we've got a good little weed eater. That came out really nice. Now, if you're doing yours at home and you've got all the equipment you're going to need, and you've got a supply of gaskets and diaphragms and whatnot, then go ahead and rebuild it. It'll save you a couple of dollars. But if you don't have all the parts and you're just working on your own personal, replace the carburetor. Make sure you get a kit that's got filters and lines and things. Easy peasy. You can see we spent maybe five minutes working on it. When I do one of these and I don't have the camera running, it takes me less than five minutes to do the whole thing, fuel lines and everything, because I don't have to stay out of the way. Well, for all you new people out there, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.